I let's continue with our section and in this video I will explain what is happening step by step after we implement the Q-learning algorithm. So in step 2, the epsilon pretty policy text in a parameter epsilon with a value from 0 to 1 and a dash. So the number of possible actions, each action is taken with a probability of epsilon divided by a. So and the action with the highest state action value is chosen with a probability of 1 minus epsilon plus epsilon divided by a. So in step 3, we perform the Q learning in the following task. So the first one is we instantiate the Q table with all zeros. And in each episode, we let the agent follow the epsilon gritty policy to choose what action to take. And then we update the Q function for each step. And then we run the n underscore episode, episodes, so which is the number of episodes. And then we obtain the optimal policy based on the optimal Q function. And in step 6, again, up equals 0, right equals 1, down equals 2, and left is equal 3. Thus, the following optimal policy, the agent start in stage 36 and move up to stage 24, and then on the right way, on the way right to the stage 35, and finally reach the goal by moving down. So you can see from the table, and as you can see in the Q learning, it's optimized the Q function by learning from the experience generated by another policy. This is quite similar to the of policy Monte Carlo control method, the difference is that it updates the Q function on the fly instead of after the entire episode. It is considered advantageous for the environments with long episodes where it is insufficient to delay learning until the end of an episode. So in every single step in Q learning or any other temporal difference method, we get more information about the environment and use the information to update values right away. In our case, we obtain the optimal policy by running only 500 learning episodes. So, and in fact, the optimal policy was obtained after 50 episodes, and then we can plot the length of each episode over time to verify this. So, the total reward obtained in each episode over time is also an option. So we define the two list to store the length and the total reward for each episode respectively. And then after that, we will keep track the length and the total reward for each episode during the learning. So the following is the updated version of the Q-learning. So we got the Q-learning with the environment gamma number of episodes and alpha. So we obtain the optimal policy with the op policy Q learning method. The parameter is the environment, is the open AIG, of course. The gamma is the discount factor. And episode is the number of episodes. And the return will be the optimal Q function. And the optimal policy. So we got the number of action equal to environment dot action space dot n. And then we make a default dictionary with lambda touch zeros an action and then for each episode in the number of episodes we reset the environment and then we make a new variable called is done equal four and if it's not four the action is epsilon pretty policy is that q and then next step we got a reward and then we got is done in four equals its environment step action and then we got a temporal different delta equal the reward plus gamma plus thought max which is the next state minus the state and the action and then we got the q state action plus or equal alpha times temporal read from delta and then we got len episode episode plus one and then we got the total reward episode episode plus reward and if it's done and then we break state equal next state and then we got policy equal empty and then for each state and action in the Q items we do the policy state equal touch mark touch as mark action item and then we return the Q and then policy
and this is a function to display the episode length over time so we use the math plot lead and then we just plot we plot the title x-axis and then y-axis and then we show and this is how the plot should look like so this is your episode length over time so length and the episode and then of course we need to display the reward as well so we use the sample function and then this is how the plot look like so again if you reduce the value of epsilon epsilon you will get a smaller fluctuation which are the effects of random exploration in the epsilon critic policy and that is only this video so i hope you enjoy it and of course i will see you in the next video.